Hi everyone, uh, Paul Wright here from Health Business Profits and uh, no surprise I've hit up my good mate Nick Schuster to, uh, to come on today's, uh, today's session. Nick, uh, Nick and I have been in communication um, for many years but, but now um, even more so with what's happened with COVID-19. So just a quick introduction if you haven't come across Nick before, uh, he's the owner of Scarborough Physiotherapy in beautiful Brisbane, Australia. He's the founder of the Ultimate Physio um, Business Group, which is at this stage, I think probably the biggest and most interactive group of health business owners, certainly in Australia. Well, I'd say it's pretty close Phys to being... Physios, I, I can't claim the whole health space for, so uh, but physio I, clinics, definitely. Uh, I, I think, but across the board, I think if, even look at the other professions, I think your group is certainly the most interactive and biggest of of all of them. So that's, that's, I can say that you can't say it, but I can say it. Thank you. He's, it. he's also <laughs> the author of the book, Becoming the Ultimate Physio. And those that uh, watched the, the video uh, previous to this, Nick was the co-creator of the ultimate social media and online advertising pack. So what, what essentially happened, Nick, myself and Matthew Holmes got together and we produced a one day or did a one day event uh, all about how to use Facebook, Facebook, um, Google ads, private Facebook groups, LinkedIn, all the social media platforms. Um, Nick then as a, as a follow on to that shared a, a look inside his ecosystem, his social media ecosystem. And I shared that with you, with you guys, you should have got a link to that um, previous to seeing this session. And then when COVID hit, we thought, well, Lincoln, the real kicker at the moment is sustaining in communication with the database. And I said to Nick, I said, this, how are you guys doing it? And he said, we just had two record weeks in the practice, right smack bang in the middle of COVID. So I wanted to get Nick on today to kind of expand a bit about what they're doing at Scarborough Physio and what people inside the group are saying to get an idea about how you guys can use your online presence a bit better coming out of COVID. So Nick, the bottom line of this, how did you guys handle the COVID crisis at Scarborough Physio? Take me, take me inside the back blocks of Scarborough during the whole COVID deal? Uh, I'd say where we are in Brisbane, we would have been affected by this for say three months. So I would say the, the greatest of the panic was as March was building. I remember having a, uh, our normal quarterly team bonding day on the 27th of March, Paul, and we had to decide to only invite 10 people to that day out of a team of 20. So it's like leader, pick 10. And um, literally if we had it the day after, I think it was down to two. Uh, April was quiet, so March was panic, April was quiet, and May just went frickin' bananas. And I think, I said we had two record weeks, but what I actually worked out is we had a record month. And we employed a brand new full-time physio in mid-March who was full within a month. And I'm like, what on earth's going on? Some crazy stuff's going on. I've looked at some numbers and stats to give you context. but. Effectively, what things look like in the back end of our business was myself and my extremely able practice manager, Ruth, meeting. I reckon we met twice a day, Paul, to discuss and implement strategy where we'd normally meet twice a week because things were urgent. Uh, now, in March, I reckon we had our record ever number of cancellations. So the girls keep a cancellation list. There was more than 100 people on that list. People were literally dropping like flies. I remember one week, I think we had 50 cancellations, probably the most ever. But the thing that we really did in our clinic is we held our nerve because what we've built and what I hope that you might build in your clinic in terms of a community, it's not just a database, it's an interactive community. These aren't people who you see for this. These are people that you're looking after for their lifespan. So everyone panicked for a month. But we were just there for them when they needed us, Paul, and we gave them the info they needed, which is what we'll talk about today. And now they're back. Not only are they back, but they're booking their family in. Where's people coming out of the woodwork that we haven't seen for years. Um, and a really interesting sub-phenomenon. Our region's a holiday region, so most people work in the city and no one's working in the city. So I actually credit that to why we're having record weeks too. Yeah, I've got a lot of well, clients last, the same, in the same boat, Nick. A lot of them, are they're regional, so they're out of the CBDs, but there are so many people walking past the practices. There's so many people yes, dropping in. our foot traffic's been ridiculous. Yeah. So, but yeah. we won't go there today. We'll talk about the social. Interesting, interesting too, because as, as you said, you, we've got clients around the world or people around the world that are in different stages of this. So for those that don't know Australia, we didn't get shut down 
totally. We we had to lose some of our massage teams and personal trainers and other things, but yeah. we didn't get totally shut down. I'd say down. half our services were cut. So like in Australia, we got stripped back to the bare bones of physiotherapy. And even then, like we wouldn't let our older people come in or anyone who was immune compromised. So we did strip right back. But in May, all of those services started to add up again. Mm. So I, I think we've been relatively untouched here, but obviously the strategies we talk about today will help people everywhere who are in various degrees of shutdown and reopen. So, so, so I suppose the biggest guts are today, Nick, how did, how did you communicate with, what were your strategies to stay in contact with, with your database and your community during this crisis that led to a, such a quick recovery? What, what can we take away from what you did? Tell us exactly what you did. Okay, so I would say we have th three main mediums that we used. Obviously, the first was the phone, and I'll talk to you about our phone strategy. Uh, I'll then talk to you about our social media strategy, and then I'll talk to you about our email database strategy. So of these three, Paul, I would say, and obviously I learned a lot from you and Steve Jensen at your day with respect to the phone. My goodness, the timing was good there. Um, I think the fund strategy was actually the most important strategy. So what this looked like in our business was a, like our volume of phone calls. Like we tracked how many calls we made one week and I think it was 500 outbound calls. So effectively, um, it was about four or five times as many phone calls as we would normally make. So we were initially responding to cancellations, but then after that first month when the cancellations were busy, I said to Ruth, I want our clinic. So there were some clinicians who couldn't come into work and this was their job. And I wanted our admin team to basically call every person, A, every person we had seen this year so far and anyone who cancelled. So we had two lists for every practitioner. Uh, call every single one of them every week and just ask them how they were. Yeah. It was nothing to do with booking them. It was all to do with checking up on them and genuine care for as Yes, you're coming for your knee or your back or whatever, but it was this. It was their head. How are you coping? What do you need? And we had some people who we called who were even sort of, you know, bordering suicidal. Mm. And without a call to those people, who knows what they may have done? And we helped to link them up with the resources they need. So early on, so five times the volume of calls, all practitioners and staff getting on board. And Paul, you should have seen everyone do this because, you know, yep. everyone thought their jobs were at stake. People will do anything when they need to. But the, the way the calls were received, people were so grateful. They were so thankful. You could reach them at any time of day because often ordinarily in the clinic, you can only reach them when they're not working. They were picking up. Um, and it wasn't time to book them again. We said, okay, well, we'll call you in another week or we'll call you in another two weeks. And that, that got entered in the spreadsheet as well. So we would just continue making these calls until such time as uh, confidence started to increase. The person generally made the decision themselves. I, I want to come back now. Oh, the practitioner that I see is back, linking them up with, with the resources that they needed. Because the other two strategies I used helped to keep them um, educated and give them things that they needed while they couldn't come into the clinic. A big, big. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I? Sorry, pull a couple of big points no, there, Nick. Um, yes. Compliance with with phone calls. You know how we push this for years, and and you <laughs> and, and I hope I hope health Another business. Topic. I hope health business owners out there are understanding that you've got your team that are now more compliant than ever. Don't don't let it stop post COVID. So if you've got them on the phone, They're stepping up, Paul. Like the good up. people are stepping up. Right. That was it. Was a big part of wasn't it? Is, is compliance, and and as you as you then go through, how much of it? Because you didn't do a lot of telehealth. I know from from my you didn't go heavily into telehealth. We did this many telehealth consultations. I'm holding up my hand with a zero. But we had we had all the infrastructure ready. We built everything. I bought all the resources. We had the landing page with the Stripe payment portal. We chosen our software, and I'm. It was one of those things that's just like, do we pull the trigger? Do we pull the trigger? And we just held our nerve and we ended up not pulling the trigger. Was that only so, because you didn't have to go to shutdown though? You're ready to go to if it went to shutdown. Shut okay. If we, if we shut down, I would have gone as hard as I go with all my other marketing on it straight away. But we just made that decision not to go ahead with it for that reason. Okay. Well, um, can I just, why not? Did you, other, other than at the moment, you're driving people still into the practice. But did you think... 
that was something you might want to have after COVID, have that up your sleeve later on? I, uh, you know, a good saying in marketing, Paul, whatever everyone else is doing, do the opposite. (laughs) So everyone was doing telehealth and everyone was saying, hey, I'm going to be the guru of telehealth and we're going to market worldwide. I don't want to do that. What I did, Paul, is the effort and the energy we spent, others were spending in telehealth, we spent that investing in communicating with the people who were already coming to us and being a little bit patient, knowing that they would come back reasonably soon and with a huge amount of loyalty and goodwill. That's exactly what's happened. Now, if we're in the UK or the US, Canada, places that were closed for longer, New Zealand, would have gone telehealth straight away. But we could probably see early on, Paul, that was not how the Australian government wanted to play the game. They wanted the suppression, not the eradication strategy and to sit somewhere in the middle, which I believe they did quite well. So how far did you go back with your phone calls? People that had been in the last 12 months? Uh, not that far because like we're quite a big clinic. So we went only to 2020 people for calls and the people who were currently engaged with a therapist or who had cancelled. So at the time, uh, I think each person would have had like 200 to 300 people on their list. Yep. So the most recent. But like if you're a smaller business, you'd go back a year. Okay. Was there, was there a text message component to that as well or was it all direct it all phone call, call message? Okay. So the thing is um, like we, we don't use text for marketing yet because the social media ecosystem works so well. But the clinics that do, they use text for this process. I just, we had time and the uh, relationship building element of a, of a call was really what I wanted them to receive. Has that continued as all... you've got busier? Have you been able to keep the phone call yeah. drive going post that? It has. And so the thing is, that's a combination of the therapists being more mindful of the benefit of those calls. So when they saw the benefit of the calls, they wanted to do them more. And now it's, it's sort of more reverted back into, you know, your people who are trying to self discharge or who aren't getting better and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but the one thing that we've done that's been retained is every single person gets a call the day after their consult with just, you know, how did, how did you pull yeah. up? You know, any questions, that sort of thing. So we're a very busy practice. Like we got 350 odd people through the door every week. So we've had to be strategic about it, mm. uh, but we've, we've retained some elements of that phone call strategy, which has been absolute goal. Big big points that Nick's planning for you guys at the moment. In in times of crisis or in times of uncertainty or recession, whatever we're heading into at the moment, you've got to ramp up your communication. So if you're sitting there thinking, you say, oh, I'll look after your herd. I don't, so I don't want to be ringing people. I feel like I'm bothering them. I don't, I'm, I'm not a sales guy. That's nothing to do with it. You just got to get off your high horse and get on the phone. For, first All you got to do as well is, as the, like lead it. You don't have to do it forever as the owner. Lead it and have your team lead it, but find those real feel good stories. Like this woman who was on the verge of suicide, when we called her, we spoke to the team and the team was inspired. It's like, you know, we've, we've really helped that lady. Mm -hmm. You know, she was panicked. She was scared. I still remember Ruth telling me about it and it just makes me proud, Paul. You know, we've really helped that person. You know, this one, one of my private clients, they got on the phones as, as all your guys did. And there was a, a podiatry client. She had an 80 year old guy that lived not far away from them who they call, is he okay? He couldn't get to the shop to get some milk. He just wasn't, he was too scared to leave the house. So of course they dropped some milk around and and he's just, oh. he's there for life. Like, why wouldn't you do that? It's life changing for him. Like but someone cares, you know, oh. what, a, what a great thing that we can do. I'll talk to you more about that with the social media. The thing that made me the proudest that right. we've done. So anything else with telephone other than it going to keep going? No, that's oh, good. I, I, we'll, I we'll move on to the. Oh, sorry. One other thing. Do um now the therapists are getting busy. How are you handling the fact that they they are too busy to make those calls now? We're delegating some of that. That's, are they still on the phone? Oh, that's what's strategic. So the thing is, therapists call people that haven't come back. Yeah. Okay. Find out why. Yeah. So uh, our admin always does the day after how you're feeling calls anyway. But I, I think I think the the theme that I would say to you is admin are normally better at calls than therapists. But during this time. Therapists weren't busy and therapists saw the need to do it. So we trained them. I had my best phone admin train one of our therapists. One of our therapists was away sick for three weeks. He came back, no caseload. He made 200 calls in a week. Next week, full caseload. It was yep. awesome. Magic yep. to see. So if you're walk, you guys, if you're walking and you're in practice at the moment and you see someone without, a, without someone in the book, why aren't they on the phone? If they, 
it's, yeah. it's, it's all you got to do. And you got to train them. You got to, you know, the resources that Paul's put together with Steve Jensen, absolute top class fun training resources. Best, best that I've come across and I've, I've done a few. So yeah, Thanks, I'll give mate. you a plug there, Paul. So our, so our phone system's on, on track. You then go into your social media system. How did you, how did you keep everyone, how'd you keep a fence around this herd? Nick? Uh, this is the beautiful stuff, Paul. So um, just as an aside, um, so I have two social media communities. I've got my clinic community called Scarborough Physio and Health VIP. So that's our team, our clients and our referrers. But Ultimate Physio, as Paul alluded to, I've got a very active group of physio clinic owners. I had a 20% increase in new members to that group over COVID because people wanted help and info. And it was probably when the Ultimate Physio stuff started going nuts in March, I thought, what am I going to do for my clients? Because I knew we needed a strategy, simple, but uh, results-based. So I came up with this strategy with Ruth. So we were going to post about four things. Number one, what we're doing to keep you safe during COVID. And we found crazy things, Paul. We, we found like an online government training program mm. that took 15 minutes. Yep. And I spread it all throughout my client base. And I said to the physio clinic owners that I work with, guys, go and do this. They got all their t- we got all our team members to do the training. We put the posters up. We put photos of it on social media. Oh, suddenly Scarborough Physio and Health are the experts trained in the management of coronavirus. It was just hygiene what we already do maybe probably you know a level above so the first thing we posted about is how we're keeping you safe so you know we posted photos of us cleaning stuff and videos of us cleaning stuff taking chairs out of the waiting room and having chairs outside so like every time there was a physical change in the clinic due to covid we would post it video we would comment on it it gave people confidence so that was the first thing give people confidence the second thing we did is we took it as an opportunity to let them know not only what services we were having to drop, but what services we were going uh, going to ramp up. So we had a new physio start, we're promoting her. And I remember I had to make a decision one day at the end of May that we had to, like the massage therapy department, um, what would you call them? Associations were being vague with their advice. And we made, uh, uh, we made a decision, we're going to cut massage of this day. And I put that out there. And that was actually the best received post we ever got. It's like very sad news. Our three massage therapists are finishing and we're looking forward to welcoming them back. So we got hundreds of likes on that post and the sad face and people were commenting as to how much they love their massage service. They were only away for five weeks. And even now we have like a two week waiting list for massage. People just went berserk when like we celebrated these people, we involved our clients in the journey. Now they're back. Um, and, and the community and the community wants to help them because they've been off work. Oh, these poor people. The community want to come absolutely. back. Absolutely, yeah. we're telling the community their story. And I'll tell you the absolute gold one, Paul. You'll love this. So one of my senior physios, he was moving on to another job, and he ended up staying with me. And I won't elaborate into why. I'll bet. Uh, but <laughs> but we told every we had told everyone that he's leaving, which he was, and this post went absolutely nuts because this guy is so well liked in our clinic. He's got a very distinctive silhouette. And I did, I did like a silhouetted face of him. Guess who's back? And they're just like, yeah, you know, it's the, it's the feel good story during the gloom. So we were basically just finding little things that we could do to celebrate. Like it was me bringing the receptionist coffee, you know, here's the coffee delivery guy. It was feel good stuff. That was the stuff that the community really just thrived on at Paul. So that was, that was the, the second big pillar that we did so the first was the keeping you safe the second was uh the feel good the third and this sounds ridiculous it was just letting people know that we were open yeah so in people were so (laughs) challenged and confused and scared during this time that they didn't even know what businesses were open and what were closed and there was a time here in australia where it was a bit nuts like that no one knew what was open. No one knew what was closed. And just continuing to promote, we are open and today we have physio and massage. We're open today. We have only physio, you know, and that in itself, we're saying, okay, we're accepting bookings from healthy and well people and you're going to see healthy and well therapists. And that was a real key message we pushed. If you were older or immune compromised, we'll put you on a list and we'll call you when things are improving again. So that was the third pillar. And the fourth pillar was the education. So the education flows into the database strategy, which I'll talk to you about in a sec. But the education was generally 
we saw some trends for the type of injuries we would see in here. So people not sleeping, people stressed, people sitting at poorly set up workstations and desks, people unable to do weights and resistance exercise. They're probably the big four. So we started to target our video content towards those things. Uh, I, I did a YouTube ergonomic video that's been viewed many thousand times, how to set up your workstation. Yeah. I did a stretch band row exercise and suddenly the next day, 20 people came in to buy TheraBands. You know, right. we were very responsive to the type of uh, conditions that we were seeing that were very specific to some of the negative impacts of coronavirus. Um, big, big lesson there, guys, in marketing. Nick is staying topical. So what's... People are interested in things that relate to them. Is this guy, this, when they watched, watched his videos or listened to his post, they're saying, this guy's talking to me. He, he knows me. He knows what I'm going through. I, he knows I've got a bad neck from my office computer that I'm at the kitchen table on a desk. He, he knows I've got a plantar fasciitis because I've been walking around on the hard floor without my shoes for a month. Like, he, he knows I'm, I'm walking the dog 10 times a day and I've got knee pain. So <laughs> that's, that's what this is all about, guys. He's been, he's been topical and current, and that's what people say. He's talking to me, and that's, they, these guys know what's going on. They're all over it. And if, if you run out of content, ask your patients. Like someone would say, oh, you know, can you show me how to do this exercise? I'd say, of course I'll show you. I will film it as a video and I will tag you. So yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't just film that video for that one person. I would repurpose that video. And that's what I'll talk about with the yeah. um, database strategy poll. So this person's given me what they need. If they're asking, others need it as well. I'll film it for them. I'll tag them, but I will send it out to the masses. I'm, I'm not sure where you're at now, whether, whether you've still got another, what, what you, if, whether you're still pushing that now. The general trend, Nick, that a lot of my clients are using at the moment for the next stage of your content, it's, it's all based on independence. That now that they've got control of their lives again, so it's all about getting out and about being independent, control of their life, um, which then leads into keeping you energetic, healthy, and, and keeping your immune system strong. I know we can't, we're going to be careful about immune system, but this is about health and it's all. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I think, I think there was damage control. And as you say, now people are getting control back and you can start to look into freedom and performance and those type of elements. And, and that is the theme. And the final thing I want to say on the social media is um, do not worry that you're bothering people. So this, the posts that we did in our group I reckon we, we were doing about five posts a day uh, and they were being, they had about two to three times the normal number of eyes on them. Cause you know, don't kid yourself. If you're working from home, you've got Facebook open in the corner, don't you? <laughs> so so when, you're, when you're talking about posting, you're, it's in terms of your, your practice, you're posting in, in your, in your private Facebook group for your yes. VIPs plus your and page. Yeah. And we would also, uh, so we, we post the uh, personal content in the group because those people know us. And on the page, we post the educational content so they can share it. Yeah, okay. you know, so on the page would be the how to set up your workstation. So you can tag your friends who don't already come to the clinic and I can push market that. I don't boost a lot of posts, but sometimes I do if it's popular. But the, you know, um, guess who's coming back as a therapist? We only put that to the VIP group because they're our they're our top five percent of clients. They know us well. They see us every day. We're in their lives. Uh, they're the ones we're calling. So we've got a tight community, and we've got a uh, a lead generation strategy through the page with high quality content that's topical, as you say. Yeah, I and mean, guys, if you, if you missed it, watch the previous video to this because Nick goes went through his ecosystem on the on the private group plus the page and how he interacts them both through it. If, if you oh, haven't got the yes, email, it's, send them it's very strategic, guys. It's not just willy nilly. Like you've got to work out well. This is the type of content for the page, and this is the t and if you don't hit the mark, you just won't get a response. But that's yeah. that's all advertising, isn't it? So if you, if you haven't got that that link, email admin at healthbusinessprofits.com. We'll send you the link to it. But that was the precursor to this one. So we've got, so we've so far, you've done the phone, we've done your social media involvement. When your social media was, was pretty much Facebook, was there anything happening? Instagram? No, no? In, Instagram, Instagram sees the same as Facebook, but our target clients on Facebook. So Instagram was, yeah, it's uh, superfluous for us. But the thing is, if, you're, if your client base is your 20 to 35s, it's your main focus. So it okay. depends who you, who you look after. So we're looking after that. We're looking after their mothers who are tracking them on Facebook, but they're not on Facebook anymore to get away from their mums watching them. So, 
So we're in Mom contact with them on the phone. We put a fence around a herd with the phone. We fenced them around with our social media sharing and the, and the, and the four different stages. And the fifth one I added was all about the immune system and independence. How did that then link into your email communication? How did that all follow? So e email, again, I'll give you the purpose of the email too, Paul. So the email is to catch anyone that's not really a social media user. So you like, our email database is around 5,000 people. Our client historical database is 15,000. We've had a lot of unsubscribes, but that's with seven or eight years of email. So they, they still open. Our open rate's sort of 30 to 35%, which I'm happy with. Um, this is where I really got hard into repurposing. So some of you guys might know what I'm talking about, but I, I like not having to work too hard with this stuff. So when someone would talk to me and say, how do I stretch my back or whatever, I would film the video, I would upload it to Facebook, I would download that, I would upload it into my WordPress blog and I would send it out as a video blog to 5,000 people. That whole process took about 15 minutes once I got used to it. Uh, what did we do with email? We increased frequency. So uh, we don't send a huge amount of emails in our clinic. Now normally every two weeks, but I, I upped it to two a week. So I increased it fourfold. Uh, open rates stayed the same, which was good. Uh, the time of day that people were checking them also changed because normally in our business it's after hours, uh, but I think it changed to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. were the times people were checking hours the most. Yep. So we were trying to reach them during that time and they were getting the educational content, Paul. They were getting the videos um, and they were getting the updates as to what services we had. So they were being told, well, we don't have massage now, but we'll, it will email you again one week before it comes back. Hey, we're getting massage back next week. Call this number to make sure you're booked in because we've only got 20 spaces. And literally they went in a day. Yeah. The second massage came back. I bombed my email database. I bombed Facebook. And we filled two massage therapists in literally one day of incoming calls. No discounts as well. It's not you get 100 new clients off given a free appointment. None of the things that we did were free apart from this one thing, Paul. The thing that made me saddest during coronavirus was the pictures outside Centrelink of very proud people lined up for miles. It was real. That was the thing that really got me. Yeah. And we had this campaign that went bananas here, which was if you've lost your job, we'll give you a free session. And my God, the goodwill from that. We had people in tears. We had people who came in and they, oh, well, I'll have to cancel. No, you don't. Today is on us. Yeah. Like I discount very strategically. I discount for reasons like that. And the goodwill is incredible from that, Paul. A couple of big things that you need to focus on, guys, from what Nick talked about is email marketing. Uh, I've spoken to multiple health business owners during this crisis. And unfortunately, not enough of them have ramped up their email communication. Some, some have even gone backwards. They said, well, I only send one a month which I, I think is well underdone. You should be, I, I think you should have said at least one a week, even in good times, but that, that's because I'm an email fan. But the, the guys well, you that are saying, big mistake is, Paul? They don't, well, people say, the question they get, Nick, is, is how often should I email my list? And the answer is always the same for me. It's as often as you've got something valuable to tell me. That's so, what I was going to say. Like, it's, it's what you're going to say that's more important. Find a lot of important things yeah. to say because your community are looking for leadership. If you email them daily, as long as it's valuable, just don't give them newsletters and spam, you know? Answer so, their questions and give them updates. So, 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 guys, increase your email frequency, but be topical. Now, the other tip for you, make sure you get some engagement on your email. We talk about engagement with Facebook and other things, but engagement with email one of our best ones, Nick, is I got all my clients to create the working from home survival guide, which just in their, oh, in their, ex, in their exercise, is, oh. in their exercise software system, they've already got it. I produce a template that you're working from home survival guide. And then your emails, we just created the working from home survival guide. Email us if you'd like a copy. So we're getting some engagement. Back. So, but that's, Absolutely. they're already doing it. But so who wouldn't want a working from home survival guide? That's just, that's, that's valuable content. So, and the other thing, don't worry about unsubscribes. I think marketing is funny. Sorry. Don't worry about unsubscribes. People panic about unsubscribes. You'll love this, Nick. I just deleted three and a half thousand emails from an email database because they weren't, they weren't engaging enough. <laughs> they weren't they, looking. They weren't looking enough. They hadn't opened Your an email. Your open rate's going to look a lot prettier now. My email rate's gone through the roof, but they, there was no point. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Yes. Just you, you work your guts out to get this list. But if they unsubscribe... And, and yeah, what, that's just vanity, the size of the list. And I've got, got clients that say, but that doesn't mean they don't like me. No, 
they just don't want to get that email communication. They, they might prefer another form of communication, but they just don't want that yep. one. Just keep building your list. Oh. And what do you reckon, Paul, about right now, marketing's actually got easier because you talk about, you know, the message, the medium, and I can't remember the, the other market. one. That's, yeah, message, market, person. media. Um, and the message is so much easier now, isn't it? Because many people are having similar issues, yeah. more so than ever before. We, makes we think it so much easier. The, the prediction we've got, be aware though, marketing costs may drop. So Google ads, Facebook ads, there's, there's some of the media, I've got some guys that do some real good offers now on newspaper ads. They're just getting it for next to nothing and they're working their house yes. down. So you, so it your, works. Yeah, your, track ad, it. your ad costs might be less, but your, your, your actual acquisition time and effort might be longer. So, so you might have to do a bit more work. You might have to do a few phone calls, do, an, do, an, do something else to get them in, do a free call. You've got you to work just, harder sometimes yeah. to get them. Just think where no one is. So the thing that I've really done, like a, we haven't turned Google ads off the whole time, apart from we turn it off for massage for maybe a month, but we turn it on the week before and then we had to turn it off because we had no availability. They were too booked. But the other, the other thing that I've done is thinking innovatively, I've thought, well, many people are on Google, many people are on Facebook and they're paying for ads on Facebook. I went to YouTube and put my most popular videos on YouTube and you pay freaking cents in the dollar for people to look at them. But the coolest thing, Paul, like we're both old enough to remember how much TV advertising costs. You pop up on someone's TV. And I, I walked into the local IGA and there's these two 17-year-olds sniggering behind the um, cash register. And I said, hey, guys, what's going on? Oh, it's him. What do you mean? Oh, it's the exercise guy. Oh, you saw me on TV. Cool. Yeah. And the thing, and, and Terry Dean taught me this in, in the social media pack. We talk about video marketing. People don't differentiate you on the computer compared to you on the television. It's still a television. You're still on the, you're, you're still on, on the, the TV. TV. On the you know, TV. How, what, what did a TV ad used to cost? Like Frank I Walker had, from National Tiles. What's he paying for had, that? They were for thousands. thousands. And now there's infomercials. So, 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 the, the, so it might cost you less with your upfront costs, but you might have to work a bit harder in the back end to get it. Yes. Yeah. Like I didn't have a direct response on those. I'm really just, I, I don't do much with brand awareness, but that is one area I thought I'll do some brand awareness. Any, anything we've missed? Where else have they got to be looking now? What else have they got to be doing? Depending on their state of opening, anything we've missed on their ecosystem? Okay, so I'm still going to do those five things, but I'm going to weight them differently. So we're on the phone a little bit less now because most of our people have come back. If your people haven't come back, get on the phone. The phone is to bring people back. Even if it's not this next call, it's two or three calls down the track. Yeah. Social media, main purpose for that is to um, people who haven't yet come back is to keep them engaged like the phone. So we now that most of our people are back, I'm doing some referral marketing. I've done some training with you and with Michael Griffiths. So I'm doing some local business shout outs now where I'm acknowledging 50 businesses, one every day to help my friends who are business owners. So I'm looking at opening some new services in Oc Health in my business. So I'm yeah. going, going into a different um, stream there. Uh, emails have scaled them back a little bit. What am I focusing on there? Um, still the educational content. So the thing is, as you said, now people are walking and running. So they're doing a lot of walking and running without doing a lot of weights. They're going to go back to the gym. So the next thing they're going to do is hurt themselves at the gym after having done weight, not done weights for two months. Yeah. The, the nature of the content will change. So my focus is now are uh, phone to stop people dropping through the cracks, referral marketing, and um, that one I just spoke about, which I already can't remember what it is. <laughs> Many it's things to do. So, and, and what I like, Nick, is that you're in the grassroots of this. Like, it's easy for me to sit here in the golden chair because I sold my practices oh, years ago. But to, exactly. to see you guys, you're doing this in your practice, plus you're also helping other people. And, and you I know, I, I, it. I love it. And I've never been, you know, I was slow to get into social media and I'm still not fantastic at it. That's why I surround myself with you're guys like better. you. You're getting better. So yeah, I am. I, You're like I used to be with business when I started with you. I was slow to get into business. But but seeing but, what happened what happened inside your ultimate physio Facebook group, like the, the power of that the power of that was incredible. You can see the community you generate, and that's exactly what you need to get guys in your practice. The community. And and Nick said it early. It's not just about that week you're there for treatment. It's the it's the relationship 
that you have for a lifetime. And that's, that's what this is all about. And Nick's doing it beautifully at Scarborough Physio. Can I ask you one final question, Paul? Because you've obviously <laughs> had your mind shifted with, so, with social media. Like, what did you perceive about it before? And what's the main thing you've seen since being inside my group and seeing how people interact and the loyalty in there? Like, what's the main thing that shifted oh, for you? Well, it's tribal. Like, the, the, it's the power of the tribe. And, and, I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm old school. I'm relying on my email list. I'm relying on my direct mail and other things. So, but the, the engagement ability, the ability to, to communicate and stay peace of mind, front of mind is, is very, very powerful. You know, I've still got reservations. I, I, know, I know you're, you're the same. You're getting the time off. waster, mate. Like it, it does suck a lot of my time. Yeah. And you're, you're getting, you're trying to get the people off that list into your email list. So you own it. That's always, and I, I've mentioned that multiple times, the fear that mm -hmm. I have of people have great groups, but, but the private Facebook group for the practice, you've already got their details. That's, you've already exactly. got that. Just but you're right. Facebook could change the rules one day. Like they're really focusing on groups, but they could, you know, they could make you pay to post in groups like they've done on pages. So, yeah. you know, you don't want your fate to be in the hands of Mark Zuckerberg and his mates over there yeah. in Silicon Valley. So yeah, yeah. get them in here, mate, get them in the phone and, yeah. The other thing that I that I Nick, even even looking at um, with with online travelling so free quickly and and like Google reviews is a classic. So I even I even in your group, I'm not sure if you saw my comment, but there was a there was a thread going inside your group about someone posted a thing that said, uh, "How do I get more Google reviews?" It was kind of the thread, and and then that people were it was interesting watching it as people started to say, "Well, I thought that was illegal. I thought." For in APRA, you can't get Google reviews and all this sort of stuff started. So different countries are different, but there's some people who think you can't be active about getting reviews, which then when you think about the paradox, there's no point in the question. If, if, if APRA isn't going to let you do it, if APRA has said you can't do anything to promote Google reviews, which they don't say by the way, but if, but if that was the, the thread of it, there's nothing you can do to get Google reviews other than give great service and hope for the best. So the fact you're asking the question means you're going to be bending the rules in some capacity. And I think my reply in the group was, if you honestly think that anyone has got a, over 50 Google reviews and hasn't got some sort of system in place, you're dreaming. Exactly. So they've got something happening. And they're all five star and they're all done on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, but that just points out the, the power of the group, which I really like the power of the group and people want to be part of something. They want to be part of Definitely. the ultimate physical. More now than ever because they can't be part of their workplace or they can't yeah. be part of their gym or they can't be part of their football team or their netball team. Yeah. They've got to be part of something right now. Make them part of yeah. your business. And, that, and that's exactly what you've done. You've put a fence around your ultimate physio herd. You put a fence around your Scarborough physio herd with your private groups. And then you're staying in regular contact. But I love everything you've done. You've got to show me the singlet though, because before I sign off, the singlet deal, stand, stand up. You've got to give us a look at it. That's what it is. That's why Nick's there in the singlet. It's thinking... old school, stonewashed Kurt Cobain, <laughs> 90s child, hey? That's what it is. Stephen <laughs> King, this one's for you, if you're watching. Watch out for Stephen King. He's the one you've got to watch out for. But um, how can guys get in contact with you, Nick? How do they, if they're physios, they go and join the Ultimate Physio. Physios join the Ultimate Physio group. Uh, and if you're not able to join the Ultimate Physio group because it's reasonably exclusive, um, ultimate.physio. And you can follow my blog because I take, I repurpose, I take the best videos I shoot and I put them in that page as the blog and they'll help you with business. You can look at my books, buy a book if you want. Uh, I just recorded them on audio, Paul, so you can listen to me for four hours. My God, I can't. <laughs> Once I can't think of anything worse, but it's good stuff. Good stuff. Good content. And, and, and just so, guys, if you're not aware, the ultimate, the ultimate social media and online advertising client attraction system was the, was the package that Nick created with myself and, and uh, Matthew Holmes. It was the whole, Nick laid out his exact social media system. He went through his, his groups. He went through the, the page how it evolved, how we evolved, how we put it together. It was a brilliant day. And I think if you haven't got your hands on that, you've got to be involved in social media right now because that's actually and where Paul, it's at. If, if they buy that pack and combine it with this new strategy that we've discussed today, they will have exactly what I'm doing. And just looking at my numbers, um, March, new clients, 140. April, 100. May, 140. And if you coming. want the smallest dip possible, like this strategy works and that's the proof, 
Yeah. Uh, our actual items, the number of consults are up from May compared to March as well. So yeah, get the pack, plug this video into it and you have exactly what I'm using right now and you'll get the results too. If you want to get your hands on it, I'll do a screen share and just show you the actual um, URL for the, for the social media pack. Uh, if I go to this, see my technology next. How good I am? Oh, mate, all over it. Well done. So you can see that? Uh, they can see it now, yes. Okay, so just go to health and business health profits. Go to healthbusinessprofits.com forward slash social media. You see, this is the information page for the uh, for the program. Step by step, step by step guide using Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and online advertising to grow your practice. As I said, it was based on a one day event that Nick and I did with Matthew Holmes. And we went through real key points on, on social media. I talked about initially the fundamentals of marketing, the fundamentals of how you can then, then include social media and online advertising in that. I talked about LinkedIn because I'm a, I'm a LinkedIn fan. That was the platform of choice for me. So I went through it, LinkedIn. Nick then went through and talked about how to build your social media ecosystem. He shared everything about his Facebook group, his pages, the whole deal. And I, I love the way you just laid it out there for you. Matthew Holmes, that did sessions on grow your business using Google ads and also grow your business using Facebook ads. So it was the how to strategy. We then did a Q and A at the Google end of ads it. are going to smash it right now. They, they are smashing it. And, and the Q and A at the end, um, we then did, there were some other sessions. So um, Nick then went, in, went inside his ecosystem on a screen share after the event. Matthew went in and did another session on Facebook and Google ads, just so you got the real how to of everything. I then thought, okay, well, that's a great day, but how can I add extra value to the pack? I went and tracked down 13 experts in social media and, and advertising. And I, I, I pulled Jeez, a great list. You there on the screen already, don't you? Mate, I, I got, what I loved about Paul, <laughs> Paul Goff, I, I've, I love Goffy. Goffy does some great stuff. And what I loved about Goffy's session is he, he talked about how he gets his team to create all the content for him. So it was a, was a brilliant program. Uh, Chad Madden, and the, and the, in the seminar I talked about Chad, 3 million plus views on some of his videos. Like he's, he's a You've got champ. one of my mentors there as well. You've got Michael. Michael Griffith, lad at his so, system. Rick really Lau, wow. big player in Canada in terms of online advertising. Aaron LeBauer. Aaron's stuff's really popular at the minute too. Took us inside his Facebook strategy, his Facebook ads. Steve Brosman, how to position yourself as the experts, all my mentors. I love this session with Jimmy Nicholas. Jimmy Nicholas is one of the best website developers in, in the States. And he, he does, he showed me some great before and after websites, things that he got involved in. If you're doing a website review, Jimmy's screen share is, is unbelievable. It takes the, all the guesswork out of it. Chris Milkey talked about his Google ad strategy. He's one of the US's leading podiatrists. Jenna Scare's got a massive Instagram following. Monty Hoops talked about Google My Business and Google Hacks. You've got to get involved in Google and Google My yeah, Business. Yeah, Google My Business. Don't leave that alone. Yeah, you got it's for free. Tony Rose, How to Be a Video Expert, and my good friend Nicola McLennan took us through Google Ads case study and also Google My Business. And Terry Dean went and talked about YouTube advertising. So how, as Nick's talked about today, how to use YouTube to place ads. Brilliant strategy. There's a fill in the blanks manual that comes with it. So you can hand this pack off to your team, which is what it's all about. If you've got a, a social media interested front desk person uh, and a therapist wants to learn about social media, you get them to do this course. They fill in the blanks manual, give it back to you. They can pretty well run your whole social media program for you. So that's kind of how the whole program works. Money back guarantee and everything, as you can see on the screen there, if you don't get it, you don't like it, you just send it back and there's no problems at all. I um, love that you put a goose on there. I don't remember. I don't remember the goose from years ago. Is that new? Uh, mate, Roddy, Roddy's been a goose for years. Hey, Roddy, Roddy. Yeah, yeah. But the strong. actual picture of the goose that looked awesome. I love that. For you watching this video, guys, if you go to healthbusinessprofits.com forward slash social media, the coupon code. As I said, anyone watches our things get a, gets a great bonus. You can save three hundred dollars off the price if you use the coupon code Nick Webinar. So N I C K W E B I N A R Nick webinar takes 300 bucks off either the first payment of the three payment offer or the full payment option. Either of those, it'll take 300 bucks off it. Like I said, you can get the program on 300 bucks off the first payment. You can then try it. If you don't like it, you send it back and you, you, it's it'll no, pay itself off in a week. It's a no brainer. 
And the other thing, the other thing, guys, we're using that a lot in our recruitment. So you've got, I've got a, I've got one of my private clients at the moment who's recruiting a new, new front desk person, and he says you also have to be good at social media, and we'll train you in it. Here's the program, but you have to go through this whole program before you turn up on the first day, which I love it. <laughs> You're the master. So healthbusinessprofits.com forward slash social media. The, the coupon code is Nick Webinar. Save 300 bucks off it. Nick, I'm always hassling you for different content. I love what you guys did at, at Scarborough Physio and inside the group. You've handled this incredibly well, mate. So hats off to you. You've led from the front. Thank you, Paul. And uh, yeah, I just, I want to say to all of you guys there, like when you've been through a time like this, I remember the GFC was a little bit like this. This is worse. Mm. You'll all grow from this and you'll all be better business owners for it in the end. Uh, but, you know, support each other right now. Find someone to, to help you through this because, yeah, it will help you get through uh, much easier than if you try and do it yourself, guys. So, yeah, jump on the pack. Um, get involved in the social media because I can assure you building the community, there's, there's nothing better. And, um, you know, not only do you love it, but, you know, the impact you're making in your community is huge. So, yeah, do it. So, how do they, so Ultimate Physio Group, where else they can, can they find you, Nick? website www.ultimate.physio that's where all my stuff is Go and have beautiful a look. and if you want to get any other information from me our, our email address is admin at healthbusinessprofits.com or check out healthbusinessprofits.com and you can find us there enjoy the hope you enjoy the session guys see you next time